Good morning, everybody. Hey, happy April Fool's Day. Today is April 1st, 2024. Hope everybody had a wonderful Easter. We really enjoyed ourselves, went down to our house at the coast and spent some time with our friends down there. And it was great. Oh, here comes Frito already. Well, what are you, are you coming over here, baby girl? Good morning. Here we are. Hi, sweetie. When mama starts talking, do you get a rub? Here, want a goldfish? How's that? Oh, we like our goldfish. There's Frito. It's my Frito. She's a sweetheart. Yeah, you're a good girl. Our friends had a, uh, a little Yorkie male. And he was bound and determined to play with her. And her initial response was like, no, I'm not interested in this. And she was telling him she didn't want to play with him. And he just kept on her and on her and on her. And next thing you know, they're romping and playing and running loops around each other. And it was really very cool to see her play because uh, neither one of my other dogs ever played, and, but she likes to play. So he, he wore her out. That was good. Yeah. Oh, so um, you don't want to go to Texas for the eclipse. Let me tell you what they are doing a, um, Price gouge, horrible price gouge. All the hotels are full, everything. Um, we are going to Bernie, Texas, which is right up, supposedly great viewing, you know. And there's an RV resort up there. And I called a couple of months ago to make a reservation. And they were, it was like three times the price. It was crazy. And this was after the eclipse. So they changed their price thing. And I actually got in at a regular price, but because we're going to be there on the 11th, I'm speaking at the Bernie. There's a guild up there in Bernie on the 11th. So I will be there. But um, hey, hi, I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread. You are in our situation room. And this is a Monday through Friday virtual stitching retreat where we just hang out in here. We might cut, we might tidy, we might quilt, bind, who knows? We do whatever we do uh, at um, at a stitching retreat. Rhonda, Bernie's only 15 min miles from you. Yeah, we'll be up in your neck of the woods on the 11th. We're going to spend the night up there, and then we take off the morning of the 12th and head for Vidalia, Louisiana. I'm taking y'all with me. It's a road trip. It'll be fun, uh, but I will be doing Situation Room on the road. This is next week, uh, starting on the, on the 12th, so... Yeah, everywhere is jacked up. I know, Annie, it's terrible. They see you coming for sure. <clears throat> and when I called, I was like, well, I'm not coming up for the eclipse. <laughs> it didn't matter. <laughs> so I called a couple of days later and it was regular prices. She said, oh, no, we're jacked up for the whole month. And I thought, well, that's crazy. It was crazy to that. I might even find out how to catch a man. <laughs> <clears throat> there you go. Margie's coming to Texas for the eclipse and she can stay at her daughter's. There you go. That's good. We'll be here at home when the eclipse comes. Hopefully, I mean, it's been so cloudy lately. I hope, you know, hopefully you can. Oh, so went to sunrise service yesterday in Port O'Connor. They have such a nice thing. They've got a really nice pavilion down on the beach. It's, uh, it's on the corner of the Matagorda Bay and Gulf of Mexico. And they got a real nice pavilion on the beach. It's a man-made beach. So there's, it's all just real nice sand. And then you're allowed to, there's only two times a year you're allowed to drive your golf cart or your Polaris or whatever, mule, whatever you want to call it, ATV, uh, after dark or before sunrise. And that is sunrise service that Sunday morning and then heading home July 4th after the fireworks. So otherwise you can only <clears throat> drive them on the streets during the daytime. I'm trying to get pictures. So I wanted to get a picture of what it looked like yesterday. I did a panoramic. And so I went out behind everything. I don't know if it's a very good picture because it was so overcast. I'll hold that up. So you can see we got, which, where's the seagulls? The seagulls are flying right over here. That's just a bunch of golf carts and there's the, fil the pavilion. Let me see. Yeah. And then there's another one. So that's everybody sitting there 
get in the word, enjoying a nice sunrise service. They had coffee and whatnot. And yesterday was Mr. Keith's birthday. So our neighbors across the street with the little dog, they, uh, they had cake and cards and he got a hat and we sang happy birthday and he really enjoyed that. Is it our eyes or my lighting low? No, I, my lighting's about the same. I think my pictures on my phone are dark. We just did not have a good sun this weekend at all. It was overcast the entire weekend. Oh, he's probably reading the comments. So he'll see your happy birthday wishes. Thank you, everybody. He, we had a great weekend and he really enjoyed it. We were going to go fishing, but we ended up, uh, we did steaks and a nice grilled dinner um, Saturday night for our Easter dinner because Sunday was Easter and on Sunday we all split and head home. So we had Easter dinner and on Saturday night, it was, it was good. Really, really enjoyed it. So guess what? I found the rest of my chicken. Yay. <laughs> it was actually in the scraps bag. And I had, I'm sorry, I had taken apart the plate. I don't know what I was thinking. I had taken it. We'll call it. I was under some kind of anesthesia. I know it happened in the hospital, but I found my chicken. So uh, if you're new, and if you're new, let us know in the chat and uh, pop in and say, hey, there's a welcoming committee. Give you big, warm welcome. We've got a virtual kitchen. It's on the other side of the room. Wander over there. It's uh, There's coffee and juice and goodies. And uh, <clears throat> I got some earlier. I got some coffee earlier. And while you're on your way over there, hit the thumbs up button. Just It's pretty simple. Just beep. <laughs> So this pattern is called chickens from connecting threads. And I'm just loving this. I'm doing it with Corey Yoder's. Um, is it peachy keen? Is it peachy keen that I'm doing it with? No, I'm trying to remember. I think it is. So here's the strip I was missing. This is the strip I was missing. Everything else I have as, as far as all the pieces. And then I finished a chicken as well. Let me show you guys. I think I, I don't know if I showed you this one or not. So for the rest of the, I've got one last, two chicken, two more chickens to make that have the feet. And those, one of them is the one that I needed the piece to. So here's the, here's part of the chicken that I needed that big, long side piece to. And then I finished this lady last week. I don't know if I showed you that I finished her. Look, ain't she cute? That's adorable. I'm loving this pattern. Absolutely loving it. So I'm doing the one with 16 chickens in it. So that's what I was going to do this morning was stitch with you guys and sew on a little bit of chicken. What Sundays do I have my giveaway show, Debbie? That's the third Sunday of the month. So since I'm going to be on the road to Vidalia, Louisiana, uh, I brought home my quattro because I'm continuing to work on building the tutorials and everything for Happy Halloween. And um, I got to get that done. So the scan and cut and the, did I find an egg with that chicken? No. <laughs> El Favor, you're funny. Yeah, so <clears throat> here are my other chickens on paper plates. So they're all grouped together with all their pieces that they need and everything. I'm I'm ready to keep going on this now that I have found. So eight of my chickens will have feet and eight of them are on nests. And that's what I am doing right now. So hi, you're Pam, Elaine. Pettigrew, you say, I am Pam, a newbie here. Good morning. Well, good morning, and thank you for joining us. How nice. <clears throat> so tell me if y'all, tell me memorable April Fool's uh, things you have done, maybe with your family or your friends, 
something like that. Uh, I'm interested to hear. We don't do a lot of April Fool's jokes around here at all, but I know when we were in school, it was always fun. So I thought about coming on and telling y'all I was cutting, you know, stopping the channel, but I thought that would be cruel. <laughs> So, oh, I got to show you too. I put eyes on my bunny. Okay. Remember I did the bunny without any eyes. So they're on the back. You can see them on the back. Nobody's going to look at the back, but <clears throat> these are two period got really, really small and then did it on the luminaire. So Lots of different ways to do things. But I did that before we left out and I absolutely loved it. I thought it turned out super cute. So, it, yeah, yeah, I know. Y'all would have been, oh, you're going to cry? No, 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 I'm not doing that. And uh, got Sing all bound and finished. and Got that all done. Isn't that just as cute as can be? Got that all finished. Okay. So there is May's or April's, whichever. I don't know. And I put the little triangle on the back. So this backing is actually a Lori Holt fabric. And it's a big chunk that I had from the back of home again, left over off the long arm. You would have hunted me down, Jenny. <laughs> so there's home again right there. And I've got that. I've got the binding on it. I need to, the binding is just put on the front. I need to wrap it around and stitch it from the back. So I may do that with y'all later this week. I'm loving that orange quilt. I don't know why. I just am. So the hanger, the size of the hanger KJ is, uh, um, it's a six inch. This is a six inch hanger. See that? But I had a lot of the backing left and I thought, you know what, that's perfect. It's a perfect backing for all of these little things I might make from the On Wander Lane series. So I'm very, very pleased with this very much. It just turned out as cute as could be. If you are brand new, this is, uh, I made this using a method I call Snaplique. Snaplique takes a paper pattern, you scan it into the Brother Scan and Cut and use the image created by the Brother Scan and Cut pop, not only to cut out your applique pieces, but then to um, take that image and import it into embroidery software, and it will create the applique for you. So you don't have to stitch it down with a domestic sewing machine. And I'm all over that. And it's a, it's a very, very fun way to do machine applique. So I'm tickled. I think this just turned out as cute as can be. So let me put this back up here. I put a little nail underneath Oreo, my cow, so I can hang my little, um, my little mini quilts up here each month that we do them. That'd be fun. I also have to take along the Kimberbell, the Kimberbell mini quilts, making those as well. So hi, Vicki. You're not late. You're fine. Okay, so <laughs> there's biscuits and gravy in the kitchen. Oh, Margaret, thank you so much. I know those are a lot of work. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Making me hungry, girl. Um, so yeah, I got a lot of little things done this weekend before we went. And Valerie came over on Thursday and helped me do the camera when I was doing the sewing machines plus uh, demo and whatnot. And I totally forgot to get her to help me put those last blocks on Candyland. So that's still in the works. I was so spun up about that live. I hate doing lives. Everything, inevitably, something goes wrong. Inevitably. That's the nature of live, right? Well, I say that, but I do this live every day, but it's no big deal because you guys are like, eh. Who cares? It's not a big deal. Am I lip syncing? Do we have a delay? Speaking of Kimber Bell, Becky, do I flip her SVGs? Uh-oh, hold on. K 
Candace. No, you don't flip Kimber Bell. Okay, no delay. Good, thank you. You don't flip Kimber Bell SVGs because they're not a paper pattern. They are supposed to be correct. A paper pattern assumes that you're going to trace it on the back of heat and bond light or hot fix adhesive or something like that. Iron it to the back of the fabric and then put the fabric face up on the project. So you would need to reverse paper patterns. Kimberbell, you don't. Helen, thank you so much for the sticker. You're so thoughtful. Thank you. I can get more hot fix adhesive or heat and bond bite. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's very generous. So Kimberbell SVGs are not reversed. They're not supposed to be reversed. Bernadette Evans, um, that cart is in my, if you go to amazon.com slash shop slash power tools with thread, that's my Amazon store. I also have the Amazon store uh, listed on my blog too. Okay. Now you get the flippage, Carol. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. So if it's a paper pattern, it's assumed you're going to iron it to the back of fabric. You're going to iron that heat and bond to the back of fabric. And then do this on your background fabric. With Kimberbell, it's assumed everything is going on face up. There is no paper pattern. However, Kimberbells are usually small. Why? No say. Okay. Oh, Tammy, thank you. That's very thoughtful for your super sticker. You're so nice. You guys are so nice. Thank you so much. That's very generous. So the thing with Kimberbell is they're generally too small. So it's best in the scan and cut to go to the resize button and click resize, hit the plus sign two times. Oh, my American Pie quilt did not go into any contest. No, no. It wasn't a contest, um, Bel Belge Cats. It wasn't a contest. It was um, Houston International Quilt Festival was calling for red, white, and blue quilts to be on a display. They wouldn't be judged. So, Candace, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Candace, I think I'm part of Candace's budget. <laughs> Candace, you need to save your money for fabric, my friend, <laughs> and cruises. <laughs> Thank you, though. You are a dear. I appreciate that. So the red, white, and blue quilt is hanging on. I still haven't got it quilted. You can barely see it. It's right. I'll pull you around the end of the. Hold on. Oh, I'm limited by cord distance on my, my thing. Can you see it on the quilt rack there? Right, at, right below um, home again. It's right there. That's part of it. So that needs to go on the long arm. I just, my life. So it's good enough to go into the, um, the display. They need it by the 15th of April, I think, or they needed pictures of it by the 15th of April. So I don't have it finished. It's not quilted. I did get the backing for it over at Fiberworks Fabric Studio in McQueenie. So I did, I've got that. And, you know, if I put my mind to it, I could get it on the long arm today and get it quilted and take pictures of it and send it in and see if they wanted it. They may not even want it. So <clears throat> you very seldom make the live show, Charlene. Well, good. I'm glad you're up early. You never know what's going to happen here. So... That's great that you made it. Thank you. So I'm not going to. I thought about it. I wonder how many people are going to put in American Pie and send them in. Um, yes. Now, Leitha, yes, they are called flimsies. 
Yes. That term from my research, that's a term they use in the UK and it made its way over here. So a lot of people will just say just quilt tops and they're not talking about a fully quilt sandwiched quilt. But I like the term flimsy. I think that's awesome because it's very flimsy, right? But that that started in the UK and came over. That's what I that's what I heard. Yeah, Friday was a hoot, Betsy. You never know. I had to go back and clean that up. I apologize to y'all. Fli F L I M S Y I E something like that. Flimsy. That's <clears throat> what they call it, is F L I M S. I don't know if it's Y or I E. But uh, Judy, it gives you a reason to get up in the morning. Now, you could be laying in bed watching this and you know it, <laughs> which is fine. <clears throat> so I like that term because it distinguishes the top from the rest of where it might be at somewhere in the quilting process, you know. But I need to get this. This thing was all wadded up. I've got a big, uh, I've got a thread on me. I've got a big thing of scraps down here from the rest of the fat quarter bundle from Peachy Keen. And uh, it was, it was in there. I started finding bits and pieces of it. And I was like, Ooh, there it is. There it is. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I'm glad you had a good laugh on Friday. That's great. At my expense. <laughs> <laughs> I was fine. I, I, I finished it. Obviously no problem. Right. Yeah. We had a little, uh, beep. <laughs> oh, you're out in your barn watching. Awesome. That's great. Paula. Yeah. Multitasking. Isn't that fun? I need to get, I'm trying to get my, um, Oh, I wanted to show you guys. So I was talking about snap. Okay. Let me get my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. There have been so many Snapplique projects on the Facebook group, and I wanted to share them with you guys. People are going crazy doing these things. Okay. So here's some barnyard quilts. These are pictures I downloaded. And people have got these applique quilts. Here's one that's beautiful. She's got it hanging up. That's all those flowers look just gorgeous. So it's pieced with applique flowers. And she used the snapplique method to finally finish it. Uh, here are now, don't be like that. It's going to be like that. The bunnies. We've got some bunnies. So people are giving it a try with the flowers, see, and the grass. They're doing all of that using snapplique. People are just getting all over this. It's like, it's like they're saying, oh, I get it now. I get it. Here's a really super cute one, you guys. Look at this. When you use all black thread, you get a really nice cartoony effect. And I love that. I think that's it for my snapplique pictures that I had saved. Yes, that's it. So people are digging around in their stashes now and they're finding these old applique patterns that they fell in love with. But then the, the, that were your bunnies, Anita. Yay. That's awesome. The, it was fun. Yay. So you're in, your bunnies got showcased. Hooray. Yeah. You looked at my Amazon store for a 350 scanning mat and you can't find it. Surely I bet you there's not one anymore. I bet you there's not those scanning mats for the three fifties. They don't make them anymore and they were hard to come by. So you, if you don't have a scanning mat, you can get, if you can just get a low tack mat and use that for scanning only don't cut on it. And that way you won't have all the little cuts and, you know, goop that's out on the side. So that's an option. If you can't find a scanning mat, I don't have one in the store. They're gone. That 350 because they, they quit making them. 
But um, I just love it that people, like I said, are there. I am coining that term, Pam. Yes, I have. I've already reached out to an attorney and I am trademarking the term snaplique. Now, other people are doing it because it's kind of catching on and other people are doing it and that's fine. But the term is mine so that I can use it a snaplique class, you know, and that kind of thing. That's that's what I'm doing. So um, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. So kind of what's happening. So Kim, you got your owl cats, you're on Wanderlane cats in flowers digitized. Wonderful. That's great. That's wonderful. <clears throat> this is a great question. Does the scan and cut plus and brilliance work for baby lock Solaris? Yes, it does. But I'm going to do a caveat on that. It works for every home embroidery machine. It doesn't matter what brand of embroidery machine you have. You can have a Foff, Janome, a Baby Lock. You can have a Brother. You can have a Husvarna. You can have a whatever, any kind of home embroidery machine. The Brother Scan and Cut works independently separate from your embroidery machine. So even if you don't want to use the embroidery software because it might be over your head or too expensive or whatever. Oh, speaking of which, there's another code for in brilliance. So, um, I need to put it in the description box. Dang it. I meant to do that before we started. Yeah. Well, how did you explain it to your friend? Yeah. Share, share, share. Good, good, good. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Absolutely. Share, share, share. So, <clears throat> but what you, so you can use the brother scan and cut just to cut out your fabric if you want, but you need the brother scan and cut in order to get that vector graphic. When the scan and cut scans in that paper pattern, it takes a picture of the piece of paper and it gets that picture. It's the picture that converts to the applique design. Okay. So once you get the applique into the embroidery software, when you click file save on the embroidery software, it'll save to every single home embroidery machine format. So it doesn't matter what kind of embroidery machine you have. You can do this method with the way I show it. You need a brother scan and cut. And it doesn't matter whether you have the SDX 85 or the top of the line 330D or the old CM models. It doesn't matter. They all work the same. And then you can take that shape. And if you want to convert it, I like to use in brilliance and I've graduated up to stitch artist three. It's because you heard it here first. That's right, Susan. That's right. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's, I call it snap applique because you can do applique in a snap. That's right. Yeah. It's super easy. So there are other people doing it. So somebody, a uh, gentleman by the name of Eli reached out to me this weekend and he has written up step-by-step -step instructions to do this for PE design, that embroidery software instead of in brilliance. And he's got a method that he uses and he was going to post those in the Facebook group, I think. So, um, well, Bernadette, yeah, snaplique is my word and it's my word because I got it from you. You guys, I was saying, I, I need a name for this. This was several couple months ago. I was like, I need a name for this. And I was like, I don't know what to call it. You can do applique in a snap. I don't know. And you guys popped up and said, snaplique. Yeah, that is exactly it, Diana. You got it, snaplique. So yes, um, I'm just trademarking the term. It's not inexpensive, but I'm doing it because... If I'm teaching classes on it and whatnot, that's mine. I got to I got to do that and that's mine. I because if you don't give it a name, it's really hard to describe it and people don't get it. So Yes, and you guys have downloaded all of them. Yeah, and people are being very nice. They are asking me if they can put the instructions on Facebook and I tell them yes, they can. The problem, the reason I don't do a written step-by-step step, is because 
I get the, well, what about? Well, I don't, because I only use the online version of Brother Canvas. Okay. So what about the downloaded version of, how do I do it there? What about this on my machine? I I don't have Stitch Artist 3. I only have Stitch Artist 2. I have, but you don't do Facebook, Patricia? Yeah. Well, sorry. Um, maybe if he's here, he might, I don't know. I don't know how that can work. Um, I, I maybe see, and I don't want to put him on my blog because people will come back and go, I got it from your blog. So that's the way to do it. And, and here's the thing too, you guys, no matter what, yes, Michelle, if I don't trademark it, somebody will, if no matter what I could take forever to write them all out. If you do it this way, do this. If you've got this, do it that, da, 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 and you go all through this stuff, right? Sure enough, brother or brother will change the scan and cut or canvas or do an update. And the steps that I had don't work anymore because they added something different. Right. And I just, I'm not going to get into that writing tech manuals. So I do have the web name URL, Barbara. Yes, that was the, <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's right. I do. Yep. I went and bought that for sure. You're absolutely right. Since I don't have PE design, it's hard to keep up with someone else's instructions. Right. And I appreciate that a lot of you are like, well, I don't mind writing it down and I'll write my process down and I'll put it all together and I'll put it out there for you guys. And that's great. But um, I, I just don't want to be on the hook for that. So I make sure to let them know if you put them out there, get ready because um, because you never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you have the CM model and when you went to transfer to Canvas, it wanted a number to transfer it. Yes, Barbara, you have to register your machine with Canvas. It's free to do that, but it's going to ask for the wireless number. If it's wireless, it'll ask for the wireless number. Now, you don't have to, that's if you want to do it wirelessly, I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, you can just open up Brother Canvas on your computer and you can save the design on a USB on the scan and cut and take the USB to your computer and upload it there. Okay. Yeah. So that's true. Now, Wendy is absolutely right. You cannot sell the digital designs you create from snap. Okay. Without the artist's consent, which they're never going to give because it's their design that she's right. If you sell the designs, you are committing intellectual property theft. And on every single one of my videos where I teach this method, or where um, I've done a blog post on it, or it's in the description box. It will say, thou shalt not, you are not allowed to share or sell the digital designs. So those FCM files, or if you guys, somebody put an SVG, a scalable vector graphic of the Happy Halloween quilt out on Facebook, and I pulled it down immediately. So um, that, well, okay, but here's the deal. Wendy, Shabby Fabrics cannot give permission. It's not their design. They're doing on Wander Lane and they got permission from Art to Heart, Nancy Halverson. So just like me. So Shabby Fabrics cannot give permission. It's not theirs to give. So I wrote to Nancy Halverson to ask her if I could show you guys how to do this. And I have her permission. I have those emails saved. Um, but I can't share that. That's right. For personal use only. What about the finished product? Um, I don't think there's a problem with selling the finished product. It's no different than making the quilt the old fashioned way and selling the quilt. Right. I don't think there's any difference in that. That's fine. So um, that's awesome. Oh, there's a sale on scan cuts. Uh, the mats. Good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me see here. Yes. So like, 
that group I think is uh, Gloria Horn Sewing Studio is selling the digitized designs with USB, right? And they have permission to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is right. And if you look on any of the patterns from On Wander Lane or um, Amy Bradley Designs, they all say you may not share these these. You can't share this. You have to get permission from them. And I've done that. So, well, you have to take, you know, you have to respect the designer. They're trying to make a living too. And without them, what are we going to do? Right. And I'll tell you, there are some very uh, unscrupulous people out there who do not mind a bit selling that stuff. And it is a continual chase for these businesses to keep them from doing, you know, doing that. So, but the way I explained it to her, I was like, you know, most of these people are, we're trying to turn them into embroidery designs and embroiderers. All we use is digital designs. There are no paper patterns for embroidery designs. Every one of them is digital. Whether you download it, you get it on a CD, you get it on a USB, whatever. Every one of them is digital. So embroiderers understand, you know, you're not supposed to share. It's illegal you're breaking intellectual, it's an intellectual property theft. So there you go. Yeah. So that's nice, Barbara. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Yeah. You, and all you have to say is this, if you're selling at a trade show, this is from Anita Good Design. They don't mind you doing that. That's fine. So that's right. We are sewers and embroiderers with integrity. That is exactly right. <laughs> Scruples. Yep. So, um, you bought an Etsy pattern. There you go. This is why it's very handy to understand how to do this process. So you can get, you can get an applique pattern from Etsy and the SVGs are not included. But if you know how to convert that placement line into an SVG file in Brilliance Essentials, you can cut out your appliques for you. Yeah, that's great. So, so the Halloween quilt, Sue is going to be May 8th through like the 19th ish. And then probably some when I get back, but uh, I'll be releasing a video a day. I have about four of the blocks digitized. I've got some more final work. So as soon as I get done here, 20 minutes on a chicken, and then I'm over to the computer and working, you know, till 10, 11 o'clock or so that's my life. So yeah, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can't, Sandra, you can do Stitch Artist 2. You want to take advantage of the discount this week. Please use my link in the description box below. And then um, the code is SHARE24. It's good through April 9th. You'll get 10% off. So I would appreciate that. That's how I make my living, you guys, between that and your super stickers. <laughs> but I would appreciate it. Um, so... Yeah, it's, what do you got? What time of day will they be released? Uh, Patty, they're going to release at 8 a.m. Central every day. That's what I've scheduled them for. So, um, yeah, it's it's um, it's going to be just so you guys are receiving content while I'm on the cruise because I'm the internet's crappy on the cruise and I won't be doing the, the day. So 8 a.m. Central is when I'll release it. That'll give you guys the day to poke around with it and create a block or whatever. I'm being told that I think kits are going out uh, this week, I believe. I don't, don't quote me, but uh, you're making four of them, Carolyn. Oh my goodness. So, okay, good. That's awesome. I love that you guys are doing all this. Yes, Joyce, that's a great question. Yes, thank you. The videos for Happy Halloween are going to be on forever, okay? And then I will start Merry Christmas probably in August. Uh, I will probably do that one live with you guys. Um, the kit for Happy Halloween, Bernadette, from Two Chicks Quilting. There, there was a kit for that. And... Uh, <laughs> Well, Shelly, it's a pre-recorded video. You can sleep as late as you want and watch it when you get up, okay? It's not going to be live. Hi, Brenda. Thanks for popping in and joining us. I appreciate that. So your status went from process to pending, so it shouldn't be too much longer. So Cheryl's waiting on her fabric kit. Good, good, good. 
You were removed from my Facebook group. All right, Sabrina, let me see here what happened. When you posted some pics of your quilt patterns. Oh, I see. Now, the problem. Well, Sabrina, the problem is. If people see them, then they say, where can I get this? And. Uh, that's a, it's a highway. It's a pathway to sales is what it is. And so does Juju have the quilting ready? I have to check with her, Elizabeth. And Karen, I'm, yes, I'm going to be talking with Two Chicks Quilting for Kits for Merry Christmas today. Yes. So, uh, but back to that, Sabrina, it, I, I'm sure it was innocent and it's fine. But there are five of us who manage the Facebook group and it's subjective to the moderator and they may see that as a pathway to sales. And so they will, there's no selling allowed, even though you're not selling. So this is what scammers do. Scammers take a picture of a finished embroidery design that they probably stole and they put it up there and say, I just made this for me and my mom for Mother's Day and she's going to love it. And that's it. And then there's comments underneath. That's adorable. That's beautiful. Where can I get it? And it'll say DM me or PM me or whatever, right? That's a pathway to sales. And so those people are automatically banned and it would, that's probably, yeah. So yeah, hit the like button. So that, that's why just it's, I appreciate um, that you're making quilt patterns and that's great, but it, somebody's going to see it as a pathway to sales and they won't, they won't like it. So anyway, uh, Tammy, the ha happy Halloween kits are gone They They sold over 200 of them and y'all bought so much fabric that, um, they couldn't even go through the distributor anymore. They had to go directly to the fabric manufacturer to try to get fabric. And, uh, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Cause that pattern is nine years old. Um, so it's been out there a long time and a lot of people bought up all of the fabric for it when, you know, when it was released, but, um, <clears throat> yes, you can still get the pattern. Absolutely. Tammy. And you can source your own fabric. You bet. So, um, I've got a link below to the happy Halloween and Merry Christmas, and you can just click on that. I think it's like 12 bucks and, um, there is a coupon code to get a discount on it if you want to. It's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun. And it's nice because so I bought the pattern, but then I went ahead and sent it to UPS and it was like $10 to have it printed for me. I figured having them do it was just, you know, the same as buying new ink because it's 64 pages or something like that. If you're jumping ahead and you're making the witch, her little shirt and her bat are on a different page and it's the last page of the letters for not the design placement guide, but the, uh, the tracing papers. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. You can, there you go. You want the have, you want a happy harvest, but you can do any of these patterns. It's so great. It's so great. You can do any of these patterns. I haven't stitched a stitch. We just been sitting here visiting. So if you just show a pic of the finished quilt top, just not say who designed it. No, you can certainly put pictures of finished quilt top. It's the patterns. Oh, you have to say who designed it. Yeah, you do have to give credit to who designed it. Yeah. Or not who designed it, but where you got it. Okay. <clears throat> so you're supposed to put a quilt in there or you can... A lot of people just put a picture of a quilt and that's fine. It, it just can't look like a pathway to sales, like underhanded sales. So if you put a quilt picture of a quilt pattern out there and you say, what do you guys think of this? Generally, nine times out of 10, that's somebody that's looking, where can I get it? So when the comments start popping up, where can I get it? So I know it's very subjective and I apologize. Yes, I did find the rest of my missing chicken, Tammy. I did. Right here. I did, I did. It was uh, stuck in with the scraps. 
I guess I just took the plate and emptied the plate. Matter of fact, let me get this out. I emptied the plate and then I didn't, uh, I don't know why I did that. I was in the hospital. So if you post a project and post the directions, you get comments. How can you get it? How do you do this? I don't understand. Even if you post a project and you post comments, how, where can I get it? How do you do this? It's exhausting. Yes, it is exhausting. And that is one of the reasons that I don't put out instructions, written instructions for Synaplique. I cannot keep up with the questions and the, I can't do it. I'll spend all day in front of the computer and get nothing done for y'all is how that would be. Don't you love it when you're doing a block and the piece you're wanting to sew on fits exactly perfect. There's no overlap. There's nothing short. Makes me happy. Makes me very happy. That means my block is square and on the right size. Right size, I'm on the right path. I love it. Let me get this stitched. Let me turn this back on. I do on these longer pieces, I do like to take a pin and make sure the ends are even and secure so that it doesn't, the lower fabric doesn't get pulled in faster than the top. And then I hold my fingers so that thumb under fingers on top and I roll it. Just on the longer pieces. Everybody be straight. Very good. Very, very good. Oh, it's spring 24. Thank you, Kay. It's not share 24. It's spring 24. My bad. It was close. Whoop. What machine am I sewing on? Bernadette, this is the Brother PQ 1500. If you can find one out there, get it. They're replacing it with the PQ 1600. I have done my novice research and I cannot figure out the difference between the two of them, except the, the 1600 has a blue plastic piece over here on the side. Mine's white. I love that machine, this machine. It changed my piecing completely changed my world. I became a much better piece piecer. Okay. Oh my gosh. Y'all I don't know how you're going to have to scroll back up in the comments to find the comment of where they were on sale unless somebody reads that and puts it again. So, so I just finger press that big long thing open. I don't like to, but I need a flat chicken. You know what I mean? I need my seam roll and my clapper. At least I'll get one scene done today while we're here, huh? I don't like to do it when I'm going to have a quarter inch. Can you rename the steps in brilliance? Oh, you're welcome, Bernadette. How is it having my sewing table against the wall? No place overhang. So, um, I don't, I, I leave the overhang over here. Okay. I'll, I've got another table right here and it lays on like, if I'm going to be that big quilt, which I'm not looking forward to. So I like it against the wall. I think what you're talking about is the weight of the quilt as you move it around. Right. So, um, yeah, I like it against the wall because when there's overhang, it'll pull, you'll get that gravity does its thing. Right. And, um, don't like that. And I don't like this. Okay, put that right there. Um, I I don't want the quilt pulling off 
down onto the floor. So I leave it on the table here or I'll have, you know, a chair or something like that. I, I'm not a fan of having quilts go down the back of a table or desk or whatever. Just annoying because it pulls. It's terrible. And it will change your, how things work. Oh, that's so pretty. Didn't that turn out pretty? What a pretty, what a pretty seam. That turned out nice, huh? Look how even that is. Don't you love that? Even Steven, perfect. Yay. You like the sewing table? I have the machine on. So this, <clears throat> last week I talked about the table that my luminaire is on. The luminaire is on a flexi spot desk that goes up and down. That thing can handle the shake of the embroidery. This thing cannot handle embroidery shake. So I've got, um, this is an Ikea. I can't recommend them. I mean, they look nice. I can't recommend them. This thing is flimsy. Um, I can't remember the name of the top, but it's their standard. I don't know. I guess it's a 30 by however long. I don't know. With the idealist legs. But thank you so much, Michelle. Okay. She is getting to be a beautiful chicken, isn't she? She needs a three and a half inch square to, so she's not so boxy right here. She's going to get another three and a half inch square right there. Let me see. I need to find my three and a half inch square. I don't think I had them cut up. I don't know what I was thinking, y'all. I have no idea. But I've got to get a three and a half inch square right here. Get her done. Piecing satisfies my OCD nature very much. Yeah. <laughs> the presser bar link in my show notes goes on an Etsy store. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, it does. That's from Gray Rooster Shop on Etsy. Yes. When looking for, okay. <clears throat> so I don't mind this table for a straight stitch machine. It does fine, even though it's not, it's a flimsy table. Y'all, it's Ikea, you know, Ikea furnitures. Not the best in the world. It'll do. It'll do. We'll call it that. It'll do. These are two and a half. I thought I had some three and a half inch strips. I'm digging through my chickens here in my Yazzy bag. So let's see. These used to be three and a half inch strips. And now they're, ah, those are, what size are these? Three and Three and a half? No, that don't. Oh. I'll have to look. Let me see here. I'm gonna do this. These are three and a half. That's perfect. So I need to cut those. Nope. When you buy, you, I think you mean Stitch Artist, Tammy. One, two, and three, and they're all separate programs, or are they upgrades? So if you buy Stitch Artist 3, you're getting all of the tools that are in Stitch Artist 1 and 2. If you buy Stitch Artist 2, you're getting all of the tools that are in Stitch Artist 1. So if you already have Stitch Artist 1, you can buy an upgrade just to 2, or you can buy 1 to 3, and you'll get everything that's in 2 as well. So that's really a nice feature. You only need to purchase what you're going to use. It's the Liberty Mutual of Embroidery Software. You only pay for what you need. So that's really nice. <laughs> Let's see here. I need a comb. I need a comb. I need a set of feet. Okay, my feet. And I need a beak. Okay, so I have all of the fabrics I need now. I just need to cut a three and a half inch piece of that white so I can finish this chicken. Do I talk to myself when the camera is off, Kathy? I do, but I'm having a staff meeting because I work alone. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I love the look of the, 
I love the look of the Ikea tables. I really do. I've got the Alex drawers in here. I have two sets of Alex drawers. I've got these tables. I mean, they're great, right? Um, so there's a, they're hollow. Those tables are hollow. And I drop something and there's a, there's a hole in the table right here, a big thunk. <laughs> so Dee Dee, that's the way to go. Yeah. Use that old furniture that's heavy as all get out. And that way, when, when you're sewing, nothing's going to be moving around. This machine doesn't create a lot of shake. If I hit the gas pedal and it goes, boom, the table does this. <laughs> oh, um, can't get your puppy to eat any ideas. Jane, give it uh, wet food. Give it some wet food. If you've got a dog that's acting finicky, this is just my personal opinion. So I adopted a very, 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 very overweight Basset Hound when I was in the Azores. This family only fed the dog from the table. So when I got the dog, they were leaving back to the States. So when I got the dog, the dog was a footstool and they never walked her. Her claws were all twisted out and some of them growing back into her feet. And she was huge. This poor dog. She was old. And I couldn't get her to eat. She did not want to eat dog food. So I started feeding her the, I bought the big cans of the pedigree wet. That's what, this is back in the day, y'all. This is before Fresh Pet. So I bought pedigree wet and I gave her half a can in the morning and half a can in the evening. She'd eat that. Okay. She wouldn't eat kibble. And then I took her over to the vet on base and the vet, uh, put all, cut all her claws off to get them down to a normal thing, you know, a normal length. And then because I'm lazy and working, um, I hired my landlady's daughter. She would come over every day after school and take Ida Bell. That was her name. It's the name of my great grandmother was Ida Bell. She would take Ida Bell for a walk, you know, just around the block. But in the Azores around the block, it's usually like straight up because <laughs> it's so mountainous. So she'd take her for a walk. That dog slimmed down. She lost 15 pounds. So, uh, oh, Scotty dog, bacon, snossages, <laughs> and everything bagels. <laughs> Yay. Uh, in the kitchen. So that's how I got my dog to eat was to feed it food it wanted to eat without, I wouldn't go to the expense of fresh pet. That's not how I roll. I'm country y'all. To me, just, just cutting, uh, cutting, just giving them wet food, but that's what I did. So I got to get these cut. Oh, we're almost done. All right. Our hour is up. This is it. Y'all, this has been fun. Just visiting. I hope you guys had a wonderful Easter and uh, don't forget, come on back tomorrow, 7 a.m. Central. We'll be here. Hopefully I'll have this chicken done and um, and then we'll do some more. Let's see. Put a little water in it. Yeah, Paula. So with uh, when Harley was getting she was a little older and she didn't want to eat. So I drib drizzled her kibble with uh, chicken broth that worked. She was all over that. Yeah. So anyway, I'm not a vet. I don't know anything about it. I just know. <laughs> I just know what I know. <laughs> but this has been a lot of fun. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. I know that you could be anywhere on the Internet. And uh, having you spend your time with me is such a pleasure every day. I love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. You guys go so something. Bye.